Welcome back. Uh, you're with Left, Right and Centre. And the top story right now, Delhi's Deputy Chief Minister Manisha Sodia will be in CBI custody till the 4th of March for questioning that on the orders of a Delhi court. That's a CBI court. Uh, Mr. Sodia was arrested yesterday after eight long hours uh, of uh, questioning in connection with alleged corruption in the now withdrawn liquor policy uh, case. The agency told the court today that Manisha Sodia has been giving evasive replies to their questions that he He's failed to explain ex at least six contentious provisions in the liquor policy that were not part of uh, the first uh, draft. But uh, Ankit, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's interesting today. We saw that show of strength by the Ahmadmi party. They're certainly putting on a brave face, uh, trying to uh, say that, you know, this actually may serve them in an election year because it really shows up as the only uh, party that can take on the BJP in the elections. But... Uh, there's no denying that this is a setback for the Aam Aadmi Party. How does this affect the Aam Aadmi Party to have their Deputy Chief Minister possibly uh, in uh, out of action for the next few months, maybe even? Well, this is uh, going to be, I mean, a huge impact as far as the Aam Aadmi Party is concerned. And make no mistake, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are there is another cabinet minister of the uh, of Delhi who is right now in jail, Mr. Satin Rajan, the health minister. But Manish Sisodia arrest is going to have a far larger impact on the Aam Aadmi Party uh, than, in fact, uh, uh, Satin Rajan itself. And uh, why in, this is going to... Uh, why am I saying that? Because it, not only <coughs> is he a very close aide of Arvind Kejriwal, he's de facto number two as far as the decision-making of the party is concerned. Uh, he has been with Arvind Kejriwal even before... India Against Corruption or the Aam Aadmi Party uh, took shape. He's been with Arvind Kejriwal through their NGO days from 1995. So uh, the deputy chief minister, the number two, the man who was representing the government while Arvind Kejriwal was trying to expand the party all across the country, he was the one holding fort as far as Delhi is concerned. Now, Sisodia has been, remember, uh, arrested in the alleged excise scam. Manish Sisodia uh, has, uh, the, the allegation is that uh, uh, he is somewhere of a mastermind, a criminal conspiracy, the fraud that he has committed on the exchequer. And that's why Mr. Sisodia at this moment uh, uh, is being questioned. There are others, those who are uh, from the Aam Aadmi Party, because there are two parallel probes which are going on. One is of the CBI, yeah. the other is of the Enforcement Directorate, which has already taken in custody another Aam Aadmi Party functionary, Vijay Nair. Uh, another close aide of Arvind Kejriwal, uh, Bibhav Kumar, was also questioned uh, by the Enforcement Directorate just a few days back. So somewhere, the, uh, the entire scam seems to be now coming to the doorsteps of the Delhi Chief Minister. And that is the reason why the Aam Aadmi Party would be more cautious, more worried as far as Manish Sisodia is concerned. Now, Manish Sisodia also holds, uh, ladies and gentlemen, 18 of the 33 portfolios in the government of Delhi. So, Mr. Sisodia's arrest uh, is not only uh, going to cripple uh, the working as far as the government of Delhi is concerned, it would have an impact uh, on the way Arvind Kejriwal envisages the entire role of the Aam Aadmi Party nationally. Uh, sources close to Mr. Kejriwal had told us that uh, he wanted to start a national yatra in the election-bound states with Manish Sisodia now under custody and the expectation is that he's not going to come out uh, anytime soon. It is going to impact the national expansion plans of the Aam Aadmi Party. And apart from that, the biggest dent would be the clean image of Arvind Kejriwal and the Aam Aadmi Party, which is going to take a beating. All right. So perhaps an attempt to rob up of his anti-corruption plank. But let's just bring in our uh, uh, guests that we have on the show tonight, uh, Ankit. We have uh, Supriya Shrine, national spokesperson of the Congress, chairperson of the social media and digital platform. We have Dr. Rajdeep Roy, Lok Sabha MP of the BJP, vice president of the BJP in Assam. And then we have Gansham Tiwari, spokesperson of uh, the, uh, the uh, SP, Mr. Uh, Dr. Rajdeep uh, Roy, first a question to you. Uh, clearly, we've seen the opposition come together. Even the Congress was late to that story. But in the end, coming on board to point out that yet again, the BJP acts with alacrity uh, when uh, there are leaders in the opposition uh, to charge them with corruption or to set the arms of the CBI and the ED on them. Unfortunately, in Assam, we did we saw that with uh, Pavan Khera. And... Uh, uh, 
except for anyone from the BJP, they can switch parties, join the BJP and suddenly all charges, all investigations, all probes against them go into cold storage? Uh, look, thank you for asking this question and straight away I will take it up front. Uh, BJP is a party which is very decisive, which takes decision very fast. If you can go back to our days from 1980 or even before that during the days of Janasang even, I, I uh, presume uh, Bharatiya Janata Party is a party which takes decision very fast, on the job, on the button, always. And in situation but like this... only against where opposition is, leaders. Let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, in cases where the interest uh, of national interest comes up, uh, cases of corruption comes up, Bharatiya Janata Party has been acting very fast and on, on the job always. Uh, you have made an insinuation that anyone coming to BJP, their cases are suspended or maybe no action has taken. You can look into the case of Shubendu Odhikari. He has been cleared by the court as far as as far as uh, West Bengal High Court is concerned. So to uh, you know paint the same brush for anybody who's coming from outside is not the right thing to do, as I think. And in this case of Manish Sisodia, this has been going on for at least a year and a half. He has been evading questions for a long, long time. And as you have yourself pointed out, there are six contentious issues, six uh, policies which he has failed to answer, why there were changes. And the uh, Delhi liquor policy, which was, which was brought in the month of November 2021, was all of a sudden scraped off by the time it was May 2022. And within a month of it, uh, obviously, uh, CBI and ED and everybody acted on it. And if you, if you make that insinuation or other political party wants to say, that uh, please do not act on corruption. So the rules of the country will always be like this. If you want that, I have no, I have no other, uh, you know, right. answers. Sir, uh, uh, sir the, you, because you are from Assam, and before I go, Akshay Manate is also joining us uh, on the broadcast. Ahmadi Party spokesperson, senior journalist Nidhi Chaudhary, also with us uh, at this uh, moment. Uh, before I, I go to my other guest, very quickly, sir, you come from Assam. The Chief Minister of Assam, Himant Biswa Sarma, when he was with the Congress Party, not even uh, the chit fund scam, and there have been uh, two other allegations which were made uh, against him by the Bharti Janata Party till the time he was in the Congress Party. He switches to the BJP. The, the, the trail of the investigation right now seems to be heading nowhere. You and, must be uh, and, you and, must be having a fair, you must be having a fair amount of idea that Dr. Himanta Vishwa Sharma joined Bharatiya Janata Party in August 2015. The Sarda Narada case was well uh, being investigated from 2012-13. Himanta Vishwa Sharma ji answered all the queries to the satisfaction of the investigating authorities. He was subjected to some sort of interrogation. He was cleared. And after that, after about a year or so, he joined the Bharatiya Janata Party. And okay. rest, as you can say, is, is history. He, he is an active man on the street always, understanding the public <clears throat> pulse. And okay. he has worked for the development of entire Northeast, not just Assam. Okay. Supriya Sinet, uh, uh, the Congress party since uh, morning, in fact, there have been multiple opposition uh, parties which have come out and supported uh, or spoken against this uh, uh, arrest of Manish Sisodia. Finally, we have seen Mr. Jairam Ramesh and Mr. Malikarjun Kharge, though not naming Manish Sisodia, but coming out and issuing a statement saying that their agencies have been misused by the government. And this is also an example. Is there a dichotomy as far as the Congress party is concerned? And that is why it took a lot of time. When it comes to the opposition unity, uh, the Congress president was making a pitch just uh, you know, one day back. But when it comes to the uh, enforcement agencies or central agencies targeting the regional parties who are a challenge to the Congress party, the Congress doesn't seem to know how to, in fact, respond to that. No, farthest from the truth. I absolutely dismiss your submission on this and your assessment. But to just answer a, an argument that has been made not in completion, B.S. Yadurappa, Janardhan Reddy, Hemanto Biswa Sarma, Shaur Doval, Jay Shah, Raghubar Das, Smriti Irani, <coughs> Piyush Goyal, Shivraj Singh Chauhan, Lakshmi Kant Sarma, Suresh Saini, uh, Naresh, uh, Narayan Rane, Mukul Rao. I mean, the list is endless. Vijay Jolly, the list, Chinmayanan, Kuldeep Singh. The list is endless as far as people who once they join the BJP and go completely thought free is concerned. <laughs> BJP is a washing machine. You join them, you are absolutely squeaky clean. The Prime Minister will hold B.S. Yadurappa's hand in an election year and walk with him. The same Mr. Yadurappa who had to resign 
because of corruption allegations. That set aside, I don't think there's any dichotomy at all. I mean, yes, the liquor policy did have some problems. It did raise, raise questions that during the time when Delhi was struggling for oxygen, was this the priority? But to treat opposition leaders with the supreme command and authority of the pliable agencies, I think is absolutely wrong. And may I dare also say on your channel particularly, there are 10,000 instances which I can point out where these agencies need to head, Adani being one of them. You know, engulfed by charges of corruption, engulfed by charges of stock manipulation, Benami shell companies. Where are these agencies on issues like that? I mean, somebody should ask the question. He said the okay. BJP acts with alacrity. Ms. Yes, Nate, it does. Only against the opposition members. Ms. Srinet, nobody was arguing with you on that. But if I can just go back to the question that Ankit was trying to put across to you, is that there is a dilemma for the Congress. They could not openly come out to support uh, uh, Manish Sisodia on this because, in a sense, it does eat into your own votes and your support. You're competing directly with the Aam Aadmi Party in Delhi. The problem, ma'am, we're asking tonight, what is the fallout of today's developments in a year when we have assembly elections coming up and we have general elections coming up next year? My question to you and Ankit, what Ankit was trying to ask you was really, no. does this not expose the difficulties of bringing together the opposition to take on the juggernaut of the BJP and Prime Minister Modi? You've had the president of the Congress party issue a statement. You've had the general secretary in charge of communication now. issue a statement. I don't understand what is the dichotomy. Yes, because we are a political party and we take a considered view. We don't give knee-jerk reactions on which we have to do a U-turn. We take okay. a considered okay. view, we take a considered <laughs> opinion. And may I also dare say, it's very fashionable for people to say how difficult it will. Of we will fight the Amadmi party in Delhi. Hmm. We will ask questions on the liquor scam. We will ask questions on what was the U-turn on policy. But to treat politicians as criminals is what the BJP has resorted to. Hmm. Hmm. This okay. should be fair probe. But this is not the way to treat opposition leaders. This is the way to treat, you know, swindlers who are being named by global agencies. Okay. Akshay Marathe. Right. Akshay Marathe, uh, you know, because Manish Sisodia <coughs> is in the eye of the storm today, there have been uh, submissions made by the Ahmadni party that there was no need for it, a custodial interrogation, that these are all fabricated charges. At least today, when uh, these submissions were made in front of the court, the court did not find much credence in what you were saying. He has been sent to five-day uh, to the five-day CBI custody. Let the investigation get over. Why make political point out of this when the investigation is it's, uh, it's in this beginning phase? Ankit, I don't think there is an iota of doubt in the mind of any Indian today that Mr. Manish Sisodia is a decent, honest human being. Across the country, Mr. Sisodia is known for his phenomenal work in the Delhi government schools to the point that in the education sector across the country, no matter which corner of India you go to, people look up to Manish Sisodia as the beacon of hope for government schools in this country. What message the BJP has given today is that no matter how much you serve your country, no matter how hard you work for the children of your country, if you don't align with us politically, we will destroy your life, we will ruin your career, we will harass your family, we will take you away from your uh, sick wife, and make you rot in jail just for being politically opposed to the Bharatiya Janata Party. That is the message that the BJP is But the is questions are not asked of the Education and Minister Ankit, of Delhi. The questions are to the Excise yes. Minister of Delhi. Let's make that distinction because every time the question is asked on the Excise Policy, you start uh, telling about, you know, repeating the achievements of Manish Sisodia as the Education Minister. Ankit, we have to understand why Mr. Sisodia is under the scanner. He is under the scanner because he is the Lieutenant of Arvind Kejriwal. He is the lieutenant of Arvind Kejriwal who has displayed an amazing, phenomenal performance in education, which is very closely associated to the brand of Mr. Kejriwal. That is why Mr. Sisodia is being targeted today. It is not because of some excise policy. If the policy was a problem, if there was any issue with the policy, how is it that the same policy implemented in Punjab is creating 40% surplus extra revenue for that state? But in Delhi, the lieutenant governor scuttled it from day one and we were forced to withdraw it. It is not a it is not a problem with the policy. Okay. It is a problem with the intention of the central government, which is trying to persecute, humiliate, right. and harass opposition parties 
because they cannot digest that there is another party which is giving hope to the people of India. All right. Uh, we also have Krishank Mane, spokesperson of the BRS, uh, joining us. As we heard our uh, Akshay Marathe talk about the message that the BJP is sending out to opposition leaders. Is the BRS uh, worried? I think I read somewhere some uh, BJP leader saying that um, Ms. Reddy is going to be arrested next. What's, uh, what's the strategizing going on in the BRS right now? So I think you need to unmute yourself. Every, every day the BJP state president or any BJP union minister from uh, Delhi comes, visits Telangana and threaten our Telangana chief minister to be present soon. So we are, we are not afraid of this, uh, you know, threatenings by uh, Bharatiya Janata Party. But my question is, have we seen any BJP leader, any BJP leader who've been tainted with corruption charges being arrested? No. No arrest at all. They, they've spoken about, you know, inquiries. You take any name, take uh, Suvendu Adhikari or you take uh, Sujana Ramesh from down south or uh, Sujana Chaudhary, Ramesh, uh, many, many leaders. But none of them have been arrested. But you see from Shiv Sena, there is an arrest from uh, uh, any party, the recent mm. Ahmadbi party, every political party of the opposition are being arrested. Why? Why this branding of arrests? Because they want to be tainted by the Bharatiya Janta Party as okay. you know the corrupt, just before polls. And that too, we have polls in Telangana. They they want they are calling it as, as a South South group. Why? Because Bharatiya Janta Party is finding it difficult to enter South. Okay. So definitely they, they will come up with many allegations, but only point is Ankit. Only point is Ankit. You see Morbi, we have seen Morbi. We've seen the deaths, no arrests. We've seen the Gujarat dry state, so-called dry state, 75 deaths, no arrests. Okay. No, we, no we've money, seen sir. many scams. In fact, the recent scam also. But, but you know, if there is a documentary, you see police barging in, you see EDIT barging in and snatching away journalists' phones just because they have telecasted a documentary those right. are indian journalists all right gansham so, tiwari of the samajwadi party also also with us mr tiwari the samajwadi party uh, very quickly mr akhilesh yadav since yesterday has tweeted not once but twice uh, in support of manish sisodia calling this arrest unjust so this also somewhere, I mean, if you look at it, when the raids were conducted in Raipur ahead of the Congress party's plenary session, the Samajwadi party kept quiet, but with the Aam Aadmi party, because possibly there is no direct contest in Uttar Pradesh, the Samajwadi party did extend their support. Good evening, Ankit, to you, uh, Sarah, the, the co-panelists, as, as well as the viewers. If you look at some of the headlines that emerged from the state of BJP, PM Modi's new council of ministers, 42% have criminal charges. BJP has, a, has the infamy, infamy to give India more than 100, not 1, 2, 100 members of parliament with criminal charges in the current setting. The previous setting, they had nearly 100. In Uttar Pradesh alone, they have more than 100 uh, MLAs with criminal charges. And if you just look at, take any state on the map of India where BJP has a mem member of parliament, chances are whether they have a class 12 certificate or not, they will have criminal charges. This is the state of Bharatiya Janata Party. And this is a party that will allow the, the real killers of Morbi to walk away. The state where, where uh, the Prime Minister and Mr. Amit Shah comes from. That will uh, allow the, the murderers and rapists of Bilkis Banu to walk away. That will, uh, that will allow the conspirators behind the 12 lakh crore uh, ghotala that is becoming coming out of the, the Adani uh, tumble Mr. to walk Tawari, away. This is, this so we'll is come, the we'll come back to you. Adani yug of politics. You are speaking on this a, on a no, no, no. We'll come back to you, sir, but let's just get Nidra face. Chaudhary in first. You are trying to create a world which does not exactly, exactly exist. No, sir, you'll have to yeah. answer how exactly yeah. it doesn't exist because uh, these are charges made by all opposition leaders. We'll come back to you in a second, but let's get one, a Nidra Chaudhary. Go, go ahead, Gansham. Please let Gansham finish. Can the, can, can the BJP spokesperson... The state of law it's a very straightforward question to the BJP spokesperson. Yeah. Can he... Can he name, Mr. Can he name any three education ministers from BJP states? The BJP has had more education ministers than the number of dresses probably Prime Minister wears in a day. 
Okay. This All is right. the Mr. Roy, hold on. Alisha uh, Chaudhary has been waiting yes. and uh, so, she's been waiting patiently. I just want to get her in before we go across to you, Mr. Roy. You can uh, compose your response till then. Nija Chaudhary, the, the, the point right now, what the AAP had, and ironically, AAP has been a party that has come to power because it has been putting allegations of corruption against uh, other parties. Here you have the BJP perhaps taking a leaf out of its the AAP's book. Can they make these charges stick. The attempt, is there an attempt to rob the AAP of this anti-corruption plank and does uh, clearly a divided opposition means uh, advantage BJP? Nija Chaudhary. Uh, two questions you've asked me. The first is, of course, as far as the charges are concerned, the courts will decide on the veracity of those charges. We don't know. Number two, what we do know is that the AAP has been a rising political force in power in Delhi, in power in Punjab, where the people of Punjab rejected the old and jaded politics of the Congress, the BJP, the Akali Dal, and gave up an unprecedented 92 seats, you know, for the first time in four decades. So, and it made, it broke new ground in uh, Gujarat when the Congress had given up. So AAP is seen as a rising force. Now it is also true that there is a shared experience of all opposition parties that the BJP government has been targeting opposition leaders using ED and CBI. It's not targeting its own people or its allies. That is a fact. Therefore, how do the people view this? Will they be sympathetic to Mr. Sisodia, to Mr. Kejriwal, to Ahmadmi Party? Or will they will they be will they view it as you know the earlier image of AAP getting dented now with these corruption charges? I think much depends on what is the uh, how the people view it. As far as the opposition unity is concerned, many of the opposition parties, because they have this shared experience of being targeted by ED and CBI, they have slammed, they have condemned what is happening, the arrest of Mr. Sisodia. I find the Congress's stand very confusing. I want to ask this, you know, the Delhi unit in the morning takes of the, uh, of the Congress mm. takes a certain view. And Jairam Ramesh in the evening takes another view. Is Jairam Ramesh's statement to be seen as overruling the views of the uh, Delhi unit of the Congress party? Uh, because, you know, if the Congress party, as Mr. Kharge, the Congress president has said, that Congress will lead the opposition right. in the 2024 elections, if the Congress expects other parties to follow it, then should the Congress not stand by other parties in the opposition when they are in trouble? Okay. Now, that is a question okay. many Mr. people Neel, will ask. It's the same question, actually, which has uh, come round to you. So, uh, please respond to what Nija Chaudhary is saying. And then, of course, we'll go to Mr. Uh, Mr. Rajdeep Roy. I think this task is not just coming in from Mr. Jairam Ramesh, who's the General Secretary of Communication and in charge of communication, communicating the stand of the Congress Party. It's also a stand that the Congress President has taken. So, there should be no ambiguity as far as the Congress Party is concerned. I stand by what... My Delhi unit is asking questions on. I stand by what the Delhi unit is essentially saying about the liquor scam. But that, that should be probed. Why are you declaring people villainous and guilty before the probe has happened? Mm. And is this the way to treat elected representatives? Especially because they belong to the... Could these questions not be asked? Without the custodial uh, arrest of Mr. Uh, Mr. 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 So, yeah, these are the questions mm. that we are asking. Mm. I mean, and quite frankly, it is also upon the AMAP party to decide today that every time the Congress leadership was attacked and the entire opposition stood with us, True. AAP did not squeak a word. And here we are taking mm. a stand and saying what's happening to them is wrong. It's also for them to learn a lesson that in and, the opposition okay. unity lies the future of India's politics, not by being team B of the BJP that they very often want to be. And, and you know, uh, especially, uh, uh, and we'll go to Akshay uh, post that, but Mr. Uh, uh, Rajdeep Roy, you heard the entire uh, spokesperson of the opposition parties. The BJP, when the UPA was in power, BJP flew away with what the court had said when it uh, called the CBI a cage parrot. But when now the BJP, uh, almost the same assertions are being made on the Bharti Janta Party, the BJP hides behind the fact that this is the law taking its own course. 
in many of these cases and may i remind you what you uh, what happened with mr uh, uh, sanjay raut of uh, the shiv sena of the uh, uddhav thakre shiv sena faction the court the enforcement directorate uh, case was completely trashed by the court they said that there was not even the no need for an arrest you can't hide behind the fact that we'll put people in jail happens, and then let them go and then let them go and get bail leader. from the court sir this happens with look, every opposition look, leader uh, as, far as, the, as far as the opposition is the concerned today i presume that they are, there is a they are in a house of uncertainty once the great saint ramkrishna paramahansa said in bengali joto mot toto pot which means there are so many prime ministerial aspirants in the in the opposition as there are parties in it so leaving that aside i'll not try to take a you know stand today uh, manish sisodia gives an impression that they are holier than thou and parties like aap with an abysmal track record of law and order and development issues in uttar pradesh has come to his defense congress is in utter uh, sense of disarray the leaders do not know which way to look as far as the manish sisodia issue is concerned now if they support manish sisodia they are team b of kejriwal if they do not support they do, are not a part of the opposition unity as far as tmc is concerned they are maintaining a safe distance from rahul gandhi also and kejriwal also as far as your relegation is concerned that using a uh, ed and a uh, cbi as a caged parrot uh, it is very important to understand that the number of cases of corruption that came up in the opposition ruled states needs to be adequately handled by those investing agencies which have been given a free hand there as is a 400% as, rise in the enforcement directorate cases there has been a 400% rise in the enforcement directorate cases since the time the bjp or prime minister modi has come to power and and the conviction rate of the enforcement directorate is less than 0.5% sir is it not that the agency these numbers don't tell you that the agencies are just being utilized to trouble the opposition when congress was in, when point. congress was in power during the 10 years between 2004 to 2014 the number of cases against uh, total number of out of the number of cases 70% of the cases were against the bjp leaders so basically you are admitting if the congress has done that then what you are doing is also right is that the, the argument that you are making right now can i please make a small point supriya go ahead go ahead supriya said as far as as far as this is please understand concerned. one thing सीबीआई रिस्क You can of take course, away his passport. He is the deputy chief minister. Rule cannot be rule cannot be different from from person to person. But based on if what grounds? The CBI you, claims today in court that he is not cooperating, but that is a matter of opinion, sir. Can I please make a point? It's silly to have this show without us making a point on one man argument. Not quite frankly, here in CBI. Okay, so we, we haven't gone to Mr. Roy uh, any more than we've gone to you, Mr. Roy. No, but you will get a turn. You will get a turn. But please. Let us not get oh. carried away by just the opposition. You have this to give me an uninterrupted way to speak. Please, please, you need to hold that thought, please, ma'am. Let is, Mr. Roy finish, and we'll come to you. Obviously, what I said is, you cannot yeah. run away from answering questions. For the last <laughs> one year almost, you have not answered six questions. Can I, can I respond? No, no. Point question to yeah. the Amadi no, party. No, I need to come in. This is not Mr. for the debate. Hold on, Supriya. Please on hold on, February, Supriya. Hold on. On 18th of February, if on 18th of February he was called, he had asked for a week's time to set the Delhi budget in place. He was given that time. He yes, he was. If the CBI had any issues with that, they shouldn't have. And it's unfair. Please do not use this platform no, to go on saying it's been a year of an investigation. It has been five months. The CBI has not moved on this case. They have in interrogated him twice. This is the second time they've interrogated him. He's not even named in the charge sheet, Mr. Roy. 
So please. He had to answer the question. He Who? is the excise minister of the country. Can I, you have to can understand I that. He doesn't. Is, does he need to be in the custody of the no, CBI no, in order to no, answer the questions? Akshay Marathe, go ahead and then yes. Supriya Shri no, will come to you. Answer, you need to answer that. Because he Sarah, has I raised think, allegations yeah. about Mrs. Sisodia. Let our response and then we can come to I you, Mishri. I was cut short. It's only fair that we will I come to you. We will come to you. We will come to you in a second, Mishri. Hold on. After Akshay Marathe. There, are, there, will, there has come a point where the facts of this one case need to be zoomed out of. In the 10-year history of the Aam Aadmi Party, Mr. Sisodia is not the first leader who has been harassed in this manner. Mr. Satindra Jain has been in jail for the last 10 months and not a shred of evidence has been presented in court. Mr. Sisodia himself was raided by the CBI way back in 2016 and that case has not come to fruition at all. <coughs> More than 150 cases have been filed by the Bharatiya Janata Party led Delhi Police, CPI, ED, and other investigating authorities against Amarni Party leaders. And out of them, 135 cases, the courts have already acquitted our leaders. So the track record has to speak for itself. We can't keep on debating every time BJP says Amarni Party has done this corruption scam. So everybody starts debating that scam. Ari Baba, what, what happened to all the other times you have made allegations? How hmm. is it that the courts don't accept a single one of those charges and acquit the leaders of the Amarni Party? But every day we're supposed okay. to believe. Meanwhile, today, today the, a new okay. scam has so come Supriya up. Shrinit. So let's talk about this new scam. Okay. What is Supriya going on? The floor is yours, Ms. Srinet. Thank you very much for giving the floor to me. It is not about, let us not be misled by the BJP. It is not just about the opposition. They train their guns and they send agencies which have really become frontals of the BJP against a 21-year-old climate activist. They send it against civil rights activists. They send it against ex-bureaucrats. They the send media. it against ex-judges. They send it against media. They send it against everybody who will ask some tough questions of this government. And this high-handedness is what we are calling the new model of democracy that Modi Shah are trying to rule this country with. Are you going to run away from the fact that you went chasing a 21-year-old climate activist and you had to be put a rap on your knuckles by the court of this country who said there is no case? And case after case, the court, our court is acquitting opposition leaders, it is acquitting media persons, it is acquitting civil rights activists, and you are the ones going after them. You did not even, damn it, spare the spare the BBC. What are you talking about? You are thin-skinned, okay. you are vindictive, and you absolutely want to smother democracy at any given point that you have power in your command. That's your true culture. The That's Prime Minister, culture. just a the few days back in the, in the Rajya Sabha, when he was speaking, he made that point. At that, uh, he said that the Enforcement Directorate has brought all the political parties together. While the BJP was in applause, many see this as an admission by the government of India that how the agencies have been used to or have been utilized to browbeat the opposition in this country. That debate is still on. I'm sorry, I'm completely out of time. I'll have to leave it there. A quick break. We'll also come back on the other side. Thank you so much to all our guests for being so patient and being with us on this broadcast on the other side. Uh, we'll shift focus once again to the big poll of polls. What's the picture, big picture that is emerging from the exit polls of the three northeastern states, Tripura, Meghalaya and Nagaland. That coming up after a short break. Stay tuned. All right, you're still with left, right and center. Let's shift gears back to that stock story. Uh, what was to be the story of the day, Those uh, uh, the voting taking place in those two states and the exit polls coming out that uh, I think are showing the BJP winning two of the three northeastern states, uh, Tripura, Nagaland, to stay with the BJP. What's going to happen, Anke? Take us through these exit polls. What are the main takeaways? What is it showing us? All right, so let's just go through the numbers. And remember, just a word of caution, NDTV does not do any exit polls. We are only telling you the mean of all the exit polls which are taking place on other news channels. So four to five exit polls have come out. Let's first talk about 
uh, Tripura. In fact, uh, in Tripura, uh, the poll of polls suggests out of the 60 seats, the majority is 31. The BJP seems to be getting through the majority mark, getting over the majority mark on its own, uh, along with its ally, IPFT. In fact, 32 seats for the Bharatiya Janata Party, though 12, 12 seats less than what it got last time but still the BJP seems to be making a comeback in the crucial state of Tripura Congress uh, the performance uh, is stable zero last time zero in 2023 as well uh, 2020 uh, and the left parties uh, which in fact fought in alliance with the Congress party 47 out of 60 seats the left uh, seems to be getting 15 seats uh, the uh, the X factor in this election was Pradyut De Barman Tripura Mota, which seems to be getting out of the poll of the polls, uh, 12 seats, and the others are getting one seat as well. In fact, uh, this seat, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, somebody who is supported by the Bharatiya Janata Party, so this will largely is going to go to the BJP as well. Overall, the picture of Tripura suggests in the poll of the polls is that uh, the BJP is expected to make a comeback. Let's uh, now, in fact, talk about the other big state, uh, the Meghalaya. I mean, numbers, the poll of the polls in Meghalaya, 60 seats, 59 went to polls uh, today. That suggests because on one seat, the candidate had passed away and that is why the election could not take place. The Bharatiya Janata, the NPP is emerging as the single largest party as far as uh, Meghalaya is concerned with 20 seats uh, in the state. The TMC, uh, which is which was hoping that would be able, to, uh, the TMC would be able to uh, get better numbers than Tripura here in Meghalaya uh, seems to be performing well. Uh, Mukul Sangma leading the TMC there, 11 seats coming to the TMC. Meanwhile, the Congress party is down to six. Remember, it was 21 MLAs of the Congress party which went to the TMC and then to other political parties as well, completely fractured to so six to the Congress party. The Bharati Janata party also expected to win six, uh, four up from last time. They had two seats in the last election. So the big picture, this could be in fact uh, uh, the state where it is heading towards a hung assembly. Will the even if, uh, you know, if the poll of the poll uh, does come true, if these numbers stay true, then NPP and the BJP together also will be short of the majority mark of 31. Mm. It is going to be a very, very interesting state. And that's where the others, uh, 17 of uh, others who are winning this time, could actually uh, be the king makers as far as the government is concerned. Let's very quickly talk about Nagaland, the only state in the country whose assembly doesn't have an opposition at this moment. Uh, the Nagaland, uh, the BJP and the PP alliance comfortably cruising over the majority mark at 42. If they are adding at least 12 seats to their tally of last time. The Congress was zero, may get one seat. NPF, uh, the Naga People's Front, uh, six seats uh, minus. I mean, so they are basically from the single largest party last time coming down to six others, 11. So the Bharati Janata Party uh, seems to be winning the Christian majority state of Nagaland as well, uh, in fact, uh, Sarah. All right, uh, should we go and get in our uh, guests right now? We have Amitabh Tiwari, political strategist and commentator, Pat uh, Patricia Mukim, editor of the Shillong Times. Amitabh Tiwari, to you. Okay, uh, just, okay. just Sorry. give us a moment. In fact, before we go to our guests, let's just... It's just not the election results right now and who is going to rule the three states. Uh, this is the beginning of the long election season and this will have indications and impact on the national picture as well, Sarah. So let's very quickly to give our viewers a brief of how it may impact the state elections of these, the results of these three states may impact uh, the big scenario of 2024. It is being seen as the semi-final. The entire uh, nine states would be seen as the semi-final of, of which st we are starting with these three states. Nine states uh, are going to be uh, going to polls in 2023. Three already done with uh, Tripura, Meghalaya and Nagaland. Now, the results of these states uh, will have an impact uh, for the national parties, of course, 
in the next six states that are Karnataka, where there is a direct fight between the BJP and the Congress. Rajasthan, again BJP and Congress. Madhya Pradesh, also a bipolar fight between BJP and Congress. Chhattisgarh, Congress and the BJP. Telangana uh, is going to be interesting with the BRS's uh, national plans. And then, of course, Mizoram as well. Uh, four states, direct contest in four states, as I mentioned. Apart from that, the big question would be, can the Congress hold on to the two states, which uh, the Congress is already in power, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh? Can the BJP beat the anti-incumbency in Karnataka? And MP is going to be the big question in the road ahead of 2024. Telangana, KCR with his national ambition, can he withstand the Bharti Janta Party surge? That is going to be an important question uh, for uh, Telangana when the elections do take place there. The results of 2023 are being seen as the tone-setting elections for the big battle of 2024. Remember, these nine combined states uh, send 116 MPs to the Lok Sabha. With Madhya Pradesh with maximum 29, Karnataka 28, Rajasthan 25, Telangana 17, Chhattisgarh 11, Meghalaya 2, Tripura 2, Nagaland, Mizoram 1 each. The Bharti Janta Party at least at this moment holds 95 of these 116 seats. Can the Congress and the local satraps change the trend and turn the tables? All right, many questions joining us uh, on the show to answer some of them, hopefully. Amitabh Tiwari, political strategist and commentator, and Patricia Mukhe, editor of the Shillong Times. Mr. Tiwari, to you first. So the BJP, it seems, as per these exit polls, with all their caveats, is set to hugely expand its uh, footprint in the northeast, uh, posting a victory in Tripura. What are the main takeaways or the lessons uh, from this, if these polls are to be believed, uh, for the, uh, the opposition? See, BJP clearly establishes itself as the uh, only or the primary national party in the Northeast. It it shows that the 2018 results were not a fluke. Mm. Uh, left is going to be or rather faces extinction in one more state. It is going to probably become the number three player in a state of Tripura after West Bengal. Congress is faring very poorly across all the states. TMC seems to be making significant dent in Congress's vote share in Meghalaya. Mm. What is working for the BJP is, of course, a split of opposition votes in Tripura. Because it seems that the Tipra Moth, which is the party formed by the Royal, is not denting BJP, but it seems to be denting the left and the Cong uh, CPM alliance in mm. the ST reserve with IPFT still holding on to its uh, uh, performance in 2018. Nagaland anyways, as Ankit said, is an uh, opposition-less state. Congress and NPF did not even have 60 candidates to put up in the assembly elections. Meghalaya always has thrown a hung assembly except for its first assembly election in 1971. Hmm. So it continues with its tradition and it remains to be seen whether uh, UDP plus TMC plus Congress out of it NPP and BJP. So and right as with Sarah, and these are exit polls. Yeah. Here the contests are very close in nature. In all the states in 2018, 20 to 30 seats, 40 percent to 50 percent seats are won okay. on less than thousand vote margin. Right. Uh, Ms. Mukin, you know, um, because you've been closely watching these elections, uh, first of all, may I ask you, are these exit polls or the poll of the polls, is it something that you also saw this kind of a picture emerging, uh, you know, when you were in fact traveling and tracking these elections? And secondly, does it also in a way, uh, you know, give a bigger picture for the Bharti Janta Party, which rules on a very different narrative when the Hintal and when the main, uh, you know, North India, the Hindi speaking belt is concerned and is able to change its colors when it goes to uh, Christian majority states like Nagaland or uh, Meghalaya? You're asking me? Yes, ma'am. Well, I don't think religion played quite a big role this time. Uh, maybe in the, in the earlier years, yes. But now there is a certain acceptance that this is a national party. It has been working here for the past five years with uh, the other coalition partners. And therefore, you know, it's not such a big deal. Although 
uh, the churches have been quite wary about what's happening in Assam, the demolition of some of the churches in so-called uh, er uh, disputed areas. But it does not seem to have played any role in shaking the imagination of people. Besides, uh, I think a lot of the people who traverse through Assam, they are seeing development up close. And they believe that perhaps if uh, the BJP has a bigger role to play in these states of Meghalaya and Nagaland, where the development is right. not visible at all, then perhaps uh, maybe these states also can can have better development. And uh, there is some somehow there is this belief that the BJP has been sending a lot of their ministers here to monitor projects, Stay with this. to monitor the Jal Jivan mission, although it, these projects hardly work beyond uh, certain spaces. Mm. The rural spaces are still very, very backward. They, they are as they were 50 years ago. Mm. But the fact that ministers come and go, I think uh, creates some kind of traction in the minds of people while they vote. But I'm, I'm sorry to say that the exit polls have not mentioned the United Democratic Party, which is quite a force in the state of Meghalaya. It's, mm. It mm. cannot just be considered the others, you know. It's a force and it has been in the government with the NPP, the BJP, uh, in the last five years and it may get about maybe eight to ten seats this time it will be a major factor in government formation so to, to just discard it as the other is not practical all right saying with Meghalaya uh... also 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 I need to make this point that the RSS has been playing a very silent but major role in that's the, true in the states in the states of Nagaland and Meghalaya and they've made more traction in Meghalaya than in Nagaland. Hmm. So, very, very interesting. In fact, uh, you know, Sarah, like you were uh, also asking, I, can I just very quickly, in fact, uh, Ms. Mukim, ask you this, because, uh, uh, you know, you're, you are in Shillong. If it's a hung assembly again, NPP leading uh, BJP, uh, you know, getting, let's say, six seats, do you see once again the same coalition being repeated? Because we have seen that NPP doesn't go for pre-poll alliances, but post-poll, they are open to business with anybody. Yeah. So there's been a lot of name calling between the BJP and the NPP. But we all knew that this was just, you know, some sort of a electoral show. And uh, I think they're comfortable with each other because uh, which other coalition can you look at? Uh, I don't think the TMC would want to to join or have any traction with the BJP unless a section from the TMC breaks away, which is, I don't know, hardly unlikely <laughs> or hardly likely. <laughs> so it will be NPP, BJP, UDP yet again, and maybe some smaller partners. Well, they say you can't, uh, you know, politics leads to strange bed bedside partners, so you never rule out yeah, NPP when, when BJP Mr. coming Amit together even after... Here, no, when Mr. Amit Shah came here, he gave us a very, very a horrific certificate saying Meghalaya is the most corrupt state in the country. Uh, and then, of course, he threw all the blame at the NPP. He mm. called it a dynastic party and okay. all that. But they don't have any qualms about coming together now. I don't know how they'll explain uh, this to the, to the public. Worse has been explained by our politicians in the past, Miss. Oh, all right, Mr. Uh, Amitabh Tiwari, one last question to you. You mentioned as we were talking about uh, in uh, Tripura how the TMC has actually been eating into the Congress's vote, right? This would lead to the same arguments that uh, the Congress has been throwing, leveling at the TMC, that they are the B partner of the BJP, trying to really, uh, they, they did this in Goa and it ate into the Congress's votes. So I ask you this question in the context of what this means for opposition unity. What, uh, uh, what is the opposition likely to learn from these lessons as we go into a critical uh, general election year? See, the opposition is not likely to learn much lessons and I believe 100% opposition unity is a myth. So with this election, if TMC does relatively well, it is likely to go solo. Mm -hmm. And uh, the current alliances of Congress with the UPA and with the addition of two more parties, which is JDU and a faction of the Shiv Shena, which is Uddhav Thakre. These two have joined the uh, UPA. So on 350-odd seats, UPA was number one and number two in 2019 Lok Sabha election. So that is around 65% of the total seats. And on 35%, which is UP, Bengal, 
Odisha, Andhra, Telangana, I don't think there, there is likely to be uh, any opposition unity. And that Kerala, of course. Just one more question. We've talked about how the Congress could be heading to perhaps its biggest uh, setback in the Northeast. How exactly has the TMC done overall? Because they're also trying to expand their national footprint. And these elections, these assembly elections are very crucial for the TMC too. Uh, there is this sense that the TMC is an outsider party. I don't know why. Uh, and it's it's amazing that especially the Bengali population, largely settled in Shillong, are so anti TMC. I mean, it's difficult to explain. And uh, they say whatever it is, the TMC is okay in West Bengal, but not in Meghalaya. And that kind of campaign uh, has played a role in the Khasi Jaintia areas. Mm. But the TMC seems to be doing well in the Garo Hills. So. There is this divide, you know, there is this uh, divide in in the a sort of an ethnocentric divide, even in our understanding of political parties. Okay. And here, the point is that people don't vote political parties. They don't vote ideology. They vote personalities. Candidates. So it's, yeah, it's always been difficult to predict, uh, you know, results. That, that is why, you know, individuals are very important as far as the elections in the, these states are concerned. And that is also somewhere that it becomes easy for them to switch from one political party to other because they are not dependent on that political party's flag or symbol to win the elections. Thank you so much uh, to both our guests for joining us uh, and, uh, you know, uh, giving us uh, some more perspective as far as these uh, three states are concerned. That's all the time that we have uh, in this edition of uh, Left, Right and Centre. News and updates uh, will continue on NDTV. At this moment, thank you so much. Good night. Good night. night.